welcome to Inside Our Playbook, where we talk to advisors and associates about what they do and how they're putting clients first. And today I'm joined by Rich Copa out of one of our New Jersey offices. Rich, thanks for being here today. Hey, Brian. It's good to be here. So, Rich, you you joined Mariner Wealth Advisors less than a year ago after owning your own registered investment advisory firm for over 15 years. Can you tell us a little bit about what led to that decision and why you made that decision? Sure. Yeah, uh, we started back in 2003 and uh, we had great growth going into um, 2018, 2019, two person owner uh, owned firm. And my business partner and I were talking about the future growth of our firm. And although we were doing quite well on our own, we knew that the next phase when we looked out three to five years was going to mean either really hiring a lot more people to get us to the next level uh, or joining a larger firm where we could kind of, I don't want to say plug and play, but really be able to accelerate our growth and have a good path uh, forward, not just for growth, but also uh, for secession. Uh, a lot of clients always ask, hey, it's the two of you, you're on a plane together, flying to California, going to Texas. Now, what happens if something happens to you? So we wanted to address our growth concerns and our secession concerns. And you learned about Mariner through another advisor within the organization. Is that right? Well, yeah, I actually knew a couple of different advisors who uh, had been part of Mariner, uh, one from the New York City area, one from New Jersey, um, and knew them for many years. So I valued their opinion and their judgment. But of course, as an owner of a firm on my own for so many years, um, we looked to many different firms prior to making a final decision. And you joined right in the throes of COVID. I mean, what, what was that like? You couldn't time it any better, right? I mean, what was that like? You know, amazing. Uh, we couldn't have timed it any better. Um, it was really nerve wracking, to be quite honest with you. It was also very gratifying at the same time. We had been working from home, as you know, COVID started, you know, in the Northeast here. And we were working from home since the first week of March. Uh, we closed in March, uh, March 31st, 2020. So we had been working from home as our firm a former firm, and then joined uh, working from home ever since. And um, I, I have to say, it's been it's been really uh, a blessing to to have a larger group behind us to get us through um, HR issues, vendor issues. You know, some of the things I'm sure we'll talk about. So, Rich, I appreciate that. Um, you know, we talk about this concept of one mariner. Can you talk a little bit about what that means, and maybe specifically what that means to you and your associates? Yeah, One Mariner was something that really resonated with me from the first time I heard about it. I know through um, discussions with prior advisors and then through our due diligence, um, the idea of having one cohesive kind of national office that has a culture of really everyone's eye is on the ball, the same ball, which is to work together culturally and really grow the firm. Um, I thought that really resonated with me because I had be, been looking at so many different options. And although many consolidators and firms that are growing out there are looking just at the numbers to say, uh, we have this many assets uh, under advisement, I think there's more to it than that as, a, as an owner. Um, and I wanted to fit with a group that really was going to be more collegiate and people that we could turn to. I mean, I really think we grew our firm with the amount of experts we have and team members so that, and this is, you know, honest truth, just recently, I reached out to someone in Wisconsin to talk about probate issues, things I wasn't aware of for a client of mine who asked about his parents who lived there. Um, we've utilized uh, or will be able to utilize office space throughout the country when we're meeting our clients in San Diego and San Francisco and Houston. Um, and the ability to just kind of all be working together, have different local experts that we can rely on, get referrals from, um, it really resonated with me. And in the short, you know, nine, 10 months that we've been part of the firm, I, re I really do see the results of it. Yeah, this is a great point, Rich. I mean, we all can't be a jack of all trades. Um, to your point, there are different state laws, and you mentioned probate. I mean, you're an attorney by background, so again, it's just it's it gets more complicated, um, you know, as we have clients in all these different areas, and to be able to rely on these resources, it's uh, it has been great. And and in turn, I know people are now relying on you and reaching out to you for you know different types of expertise. So to your point, we're all sort of in this together. Um, you know, maybe just any other parting thoughts you'd like to leave? Well, you know, I think one of the best things uh, for us has been a uh, secession plan in place. And I think that's an overused phrase because most times you're always focused on the owners of the firm. But for me, um, it's it's really a secession plan for not just the owners. It's a secession plan for our clients. It's a secession plan for our staff. The ability now to be able to tell clients that 
you're going to be cared for beyond the lives of myself and my former business partner and be able to care for them and their children and grandchildren because that's what we talk about, of course, through um, the advisement that we give on estate planning and the types of investment strategies for the next generation and gifting strategies. Um, there's really some meat behind what we're saying now. And for our staff as well, I mean, the ability to have a growth plan for them, professional growth plan that they can see opportunities across the firm, not just in the local office, um, if need be, I think is, is really uh, one of the great takeaways that we have. Um, and then finally, I have to say, as a former business owner, the ability to hand off the headquarters, especially during this COVID period, but that wasn't even the point when we did this, we wanted to relieve ourselves of some of those mundane issues that every business owner out there knows, whether they're dealing with SEC compliance, they're dealing with vendor issues, they're dealing with computer issues, HR issues, just to be able to kind of put that away from our everyday thoughts and be able to do what we love, which is really just advising clients, but know all that important stuff to run a business is being done properly and probably a lot better than I was able to do uh, because we have experts that are just dedicated every day and headquarters is one of the best feelings I have as a business owner to help us really continue to grow and keep doing what we love to do. Rich, that's terrific. Uh, I really appreciate your time today. Thrilled and ecstatic that you joined the organization and we're lucky to have you. So Rich, thanks again, I appreciate it. Thank you, Brian, really appreciate it.